Oh, hello there. How are you doing today? Thanks so much for sharing. I'm JD, the Chief Learning Architect at Exonify, and this is In The Know, your 25 minute deep dive into the employee experience and what we can do to make it better. Now, today is a historic day for our show. This is our first ever ITK Rewind. Now I know what you're thinking. Is that just a fancy name for a rerun? And it is, it is today. Today is a rerun, but it's only kind of a rerun because you see what you see right here, all of this, all this, this is brand new right here. In fact, watch this. See, you've never seen me do that before, have you? So this is more of a hybrid episode where you're going to get some exciting new information while we revisit a classic installment of ITK. And it was exactly one year ago today where we are first joined by gamification guru, Carl Kopp on ITK episode number four. And since then, Carl's appearance has racked up the most views of any ITK episode, including the one where I ate increasingly hot chicken wings live on the internet. So that says a lot about Carl Kopp, right? So we figured, let's just give the audience what you want. And that is clearly more Carl Kopp. Now, keep in mind that the conversation you're about to see was recorded last year, so it's not live. So when we ask you to drop questions into the LinkedIn chat, know that we can't answer you. However, if you do have questions or comments about the effective use of gamification in learning, feel free to drop those comments and questions in the LinkedIn chat, and I'll connect with you after today's episode. And I'm also going to check in you know, throughout the show to make sure things are going okay, as it were. So... I hope you enjoy this very special ITK Rewind with gamification guru, Carl Kopp. Take it away, past JD. Yes, today's episode, all about games, specifically applying games and game mechanics in the workplace to help people improve their knowledge and skills. And if you're gonna have a gamification party, which clearly that's what this is, there's only one person you absolutely need to have on your invite list. He's a professor, professor of instructional technology at Bloomsburg University in my home state of Pennsylvania, where he teaches instructional game design and gamification. He's written over a half dozen books, including the seminal Gamification of Learning and Instruction, as well as Play to Learn. And he recently launched a YouTube series entitled The Unofficial Unauthorized History of Learning Games. He's the only person in the industry that I know of to ever have a beverage I named after him. him. And he's also <laughs> the person the first person to ever recognize me in real life from Twitter. Of course, I'm talking about Carl Kopp. Carl Kopp, you're in the know with Exonify. Hey, JD, great to be here. Great to be in the know. And uh, thanks for that intro. It was a, a lot of fun and I'm uh, very excited to, to be here. My pleasure. Love that the book's always at the ready. Book yeah, well, you know, ready. they're just right here. I, I it's ha you know, when you write a book, you have to go to author school and they teach you like how to promote the book. Of course, I make like 50 cents off a copy. It's it's kind of ridiculous. But anyway, it, it's a fun thing to throw around. Every 50 cents matters, Carl. Every, Every 50, 50 matters. cents matters. Now, I know we were talking before the show. And I know you're doing plenty of podcasts, webinars, appearances. You're on the interviews. You're talking about gamification and game-based learning everywhere. So we're planning something a little different for you here today. But before we get into all that, could you tell us a bit about your new YouTube series? Yeah, so I created a series called the Unofficial Unauthorized History of Learning Games, or sometimes it's called the Unauthorized Unofficial. But it's basically a little bit of a tongue in cheek, but we look at historic learning games. So we've gone way back to the first card game ever. We take a look at the MIT beer distribution game. We try to favor games that involve some kind of beverage, uh, because why not? And uh, we have a lot of fun with exploring the topics. And then we say, okay, now what lessons can we learn from these particular games? What can we take away? So that's kind of the, the impetus of the series. It's, uh, it's an occasional series, which means I don't do it regularly uh, because <laughs> I'm trying to find the time. But the idea is really to help people think about games and elements of games historically that we can use and apply to what we're creating today, the learning and environment that we want within our organizations. 
Awesome. It's it's an awesome series. I've watched most of the episodes and certainly a lot of great information. And like you said, inspiration so that people can take a lot of way and apply it in the way they apply games and game mechanics in their work. Now, there are plenty of questions that I could ask you, lots of do's and don'ts about gamification. But again, I'm sure your biggest fans who are watching right now have already seen you answer those questions. They've heard hello to both of them. Right. Wow. (laughs) Hi, mom. Raise the bar. So instead, Carl, instead of the standard interview, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you to be the first contestant ever on In the Know the Game. That's right. We've got theme music for everything. Carl, I'm going to challenge you to apply your infinite knowledge of the use of games and learning through a series of rounds of our very special game. So here you can see, here's our in the know game board. Bring it up, there it is. Ah. You can see right now you're standing off at Bloomsburg University. We wanna get you all the way across the board to a wonderful vacation on a sandy beach of your choice. But of course my producers, my producers wanna clarify that this trip is entirely imaginary and does not constitute an actual prize to be won on today's show. But instead, Carl, you're getting all the bragging rights. Uh, Hey, you know, I'll take what I can get. That exactly. 50 cents will get me, well, a pack of gum, maybe. Anyway. There it is. There it is. By the way. I'll, I'll get you a really nice pack of gum. Okay. So, right. Hey, I, I just wanted to pop in real quick and let you know that after this episode initially aired, I did, in fact, gift Carl with a ridiculous amount of chewing gum the first time I saw him in person. So go ahead. Ask him for a piece of gum whenever you run into him in real life. Okay. Okay. That's enough. Back to the show. Are you excited, Carl, to play in I'm the excited. know the game? Are you I ready am. to go? Yes. All right. So here's how it's going to work. We're going to speed play our way through eight rounds. Each round contains a set of different challenges. So the challenge options are they're going to be objection challenges, where I'm going to ask you to overcome a common objection to gamified learning in a quick and concise manner. Okay. There are interesting fact challenges, where I'm going to ask you to share an interesting fact from your new YouTube series. And then there are viewer question challenges where I'm going to pose a question from one of our live viewers about gamification. And that means that I need everyone out there's help. So if you're watching right now live on LinkedIn, drop your questions for Carl in the chat and our producers are going to pick the best questions to serve up during the game. So that's a quick summary of what we're up to. Carl, you're ready to try this out. Begin round one. I'm I'm ready. And you know what? I will share my prize with everyone. So we're all we're we're all playing for high stakes. So next time you see Carl, walk up to him and ask him for a stick of gum. <laughs> we'll see. We'll, you'll know how this how this works. No, I mean the virtual beach. I'm not oh. giving away gum. <laughs> wow. Wow. We're learning so much already. All I right. Know. So let's start off round one. We're going to begin with a gamification objection. All right. So Carl, how would you respond to someone who says games? are a waste of time. People are too busy to do this kind of stuff at work. What's your response? So I would say if you want, it's not the format, it's the learning that occurs. So if you want deep thought, and if you want people to think non-linearly, games are a great tool to do that. And then sometimes I'd ask, how's your current training working, by the way? Ooh, spin it around on them with that. That's what I like it. Yeah. That's, that's a co- positive answer, correct answer. Not that they're going to be any wrong answers, but a great <laughs> answer for overcoming our first objection. That leads to the wrap up for round one, an interesting fact challenge. So Carl, can you share an interesting fact from your new YouTube series? Sure. The very first card game was about 960 AD, and it involved scenarios written on the cards. There you go, everybody. Interesting fact. You want to check out the YouTube series? Round of applause, Carl. You already sped through round one. Means we're headed to round two that much closer to a non-existent vacation. We're going to start this round off with a viewer question. So I see a viewer question that asks, your favorite studies to cite when customers question the efficacy of gamification. So if people are looking for that research backing, where would you send people? Yeah, so, uh, well, one really interesting study that was done was a woman named uh, Tracy Sitzman did a great um, study. Um, uh, she it was a meta-analysis study of studies. Uh, the one thing I find very interesting though is when people ask me for the research, they don't really want 
the research. They want to say, well, there's no research on that. There's no research. So I've actually done uh, 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 an article on that on LinkedIn that kind of walks through, hey, show me the evidence and I'll believe kind of thing. Because most of the time I find that people that really dig into the evidence aren't as interested in finding out, does it work? They're more interested in finding out, uh, oh, there's not enough research or, oh, it's not in my industry. Oh, it's not, you know, so that kind of stuff. But uh, I think that's uh, a way to think about it. Awesome. Another great answer and a great, great question. So keep them coming on LinkedIn. You've got questions about game-based learning, learning games, gamification for Carl here, and want to help him get to that, again, dream and, and by, by, by dream vacation, I literally mean dream, <laughs> dream vacation, vacation right, in this yeah. case. Uh, make sure to submit them on LinkedIn. But let's uh, to move on to round three. I've got another gamification objection for you. We're really okay. tackling a bunch of those already. So what if people said to you, well, people don't care about points and leaderboards, Carl. How do you respond? Right. So I would say that, yeah, no, they don't. And if you don't design it properly, they will never care. So one of the great things about uh, points is that they can give you feedback on the level of correctness. So just giving somebody points for logging in is not as effective as saying, hey, you could score between five and 10 points by um, responding this way. And then if I only scored five, I know mm, didn't do so well. 10, okay, I got it. Same thing with leaderboards are really interesting. Uh, it's how you use them. I think that group leaderboards are far more effective than individual leaderboards. Um, I always say like the top 10 people on a leaderboard love it, 11th person at, 100th person hates it. So you've got to design them carefully and group leaderboards seem to be a really effective tool. Great practical tips. That's taken Carl straight to round three where we're going to begin with another viewer question. Our next viewer question, question comes from Andrea. And the question is, is gamification a short-term engagement tactic or is it proven to work long-term for the same employees? Yeah, so this is fascinating. So um, uh, uh, you would think from a lot of the research about intrinsic and extrinsic learning that it would just be short-term. In fact, that research is flawed in many ways, which is interesting. The instruments themselves uh, were not um, properly set up. But I've done a two-year study um, with some uh, study of people using gamification and found out that it has not dropped off. It actually kept going. You would assume that maybe it dropped off, but it kept going. And one of the thoughts is because uh, you have a variety of different games that you can play and a variety of different activities. So if you did the same thing over and over and over again, yes, it eventually gets boring. Anything does. So for gamification to work, you need to mix it up. But can it work long term? The answer is yes. Variety is the spice of gamification. Great answer. Debunking the research here on <laughs> In the Know the Game today. Let's wrap up round three with another interesting fact from the unofficial, unauthorized, or unauthorized, unofficial history of learning games. Who knows? Uh, so uh, interestingly, the MIT beer game was actually created around a factory that used small appliances. And so uh, the thing I think is 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 funny is you know you're 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 a professor you're trying to attract students so you name it after beer right um, but they say no 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 we just did that because of the supply chain of beer but the original game was based on small appliances why change to beer we question the reasoning. <laughs> Great, interesting fact. Another reason to check out the YouTube series. Carl's moving on to round number four, Yay. which is actually the double double round. I can feel the excitement. Carl. Ooh, I feel the excitement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and the crowd. I'm and really nervous. So, in the double double round, we have two back to back viewer questions. So, twice the challenge, twice the opportunity for folks to submit questions on LinkedIn to challenge Carl's, again, infinite knowledge of games, <laughs> game based learning, and gamification. But before I let you answer those questions. We have to let you know the Double Double is brought to you by Exonify Rewards. Recognize your employees' continuous learning and development efforts by transforming those points earned during daily training into tangible rewards. Run auctions, raffles, or an entire company storefront directly within the Exonify platform. Stock your rewards programs with gift cards, company swag, private parking spaces, anything that aligns with your company culture. So to learn more about Exonify's rewards capabilities, along with other motivational tools that will help your employees build a habit of everyday learning, head over to exonify.com. Now the first 
question, Carl, of the double double is okay. looking over. How do you respond to someone who says that gamified learning doesn't cater to all age groups, but just the young people? Yeah, so that's a great question. So, so I think uh, I want to go to. There's a misconception about gamification that gamification equals games, but it doesn't. It equals the techniques. So, uh, adults, we like to see progression. Adults, we like to see the context of stories. Adults, we like to see success of overcoming obstacles. So, when we frame gamification in the tools of games, not the elements of games themselves we can apply it to a lot more places. And people always say to me, well, engineers don't like gamification. I say, well, what do engineers like? They like to solve problems. Okay, well, let's use an approach where they're solving problems rather than you know moving a little character across the screen to a virtual beach. So uh, it just depends on your audience. Carl's picking on my game today, but that's okay. <laughs> Still a great answer. <laughs> great question as well. Here's the second half of the double-double round. What is the first step an instructional designer can take to integrate gamification in corporate e-learning? So uh, to me, gamification is not about the tools or the technology. It's an affordance. So it's a way of looking at design. And so I always suggest that if you want to know how to design good games, start playing games. Play games that you don't like, play games that you're not familiar with, play games that are not comfortable to you, play card games, board games, video games, mobile games. Uh, that will give you a sense. If the only game you've ever played is Monopoly, then every type of learning that you try to create looks like Monopoly. So you don't want to do that. You want to have what I call game literacy, where you can borrow a lot of different elements and ideas from the games. And so it more naturally fits with the content that you're trying to teach rather than trying to shoehorn everything into you know, Monopoly, which isn't that great of a game anyway. Carl, you're advancing our own game literacy today <laughs> within the Know the Game. You're heading to round five, more than halfway to the non-existent vacation. But now, but now we have a surprise twist question, Carl. You didn't oh, know no. this was coming. You had no, I had no idea. idea. No idea. Carl, can you tell us a bit about what you'll be talking about at next week's big ATD22 conference here in Orlando? Hey, it's me again. Of course, ATD22 has long come and gone. So instead of hearing about what Carl talked about at last year's event, I figured this is a good opportunity to let you know what the Exonify team and I have planned for ATD23, which is actually less than two weeks away from right now in San Diego, California. So first of all, we hope you all stop by to say hello during the expo. We'll be sharing awesome customer stories and showcasing our latest frontline enablement technologies, including campaigns that wrap together learning, communication, and job tasks all in one experience. So be sure to visit booth 923 if you find yourself in San Diego between May 21st and May 24th. I'm also very excited about the opportunity to present alongside our friends at Kroger. I'll be joined by Nate Sadal, Senior Leader of Talent Development at Kroger, who will share his best kept secrets to getting stakeholder buy-in for new L&D ideas. This is a can't miss session. So make sure to mark your agenda for Monday at 1 p.m. for an awesome conversation with Nate from Kroger. You can also join me for a deep dive into the modern learning ecosystem. That's right. The book is coming to life at this year's ATD event on Tuesday at 1030 a.m. Then I'll be signing copies of my book right after the session at the ATD bookstore. But you can also stop by the Exonify booth anytime during the event. I'd love to hear what you think about the book. Okay, I think that's everything we've got planned so far for ATD23. Let's get back to the ITK game and see if Carl makes it all the way to that fantasy beach vacation. So to move to round six, we do have a gamification objection to throw your way. Carl, gamification just won't work in our organization's culture. Okay. <laughs> no, that's crazy. So I talked about before uh, that you need to match it with the the type of game activities and type of processes that you do. And there's lots of different ways to think about gamification. It's not like there's one way to do gamification. And it's not like it always has to be games. So I did a, a workshop one time and it was so funny. I, I had created this game specifically for salespeople called, uh, see, 
zombie sales apocalypse. And uh, I had one woman up front say, this is the worst game I've ever played. I hate this game. This is horrible. And I had somebody in the back goes, oh my gosh, I love this game. This is great. I can't wait to take it back. So what was the difference? It was the audience. One woman was more of an HR focus and not, not as competitive in terms of the people that she dealt with. The other woman was sales, highly competitive. So you've got to be really careful about how you design gamification. One thing that's missed a lot is cooperative games. Uh, cooperative games are huge huge, especially over in Europe, and are really great ways to build teamwork. So if you want to build a team, don't play a competitive game, play a cooperative game. So you've got to match the game affordances to the culture and the goals of the learning. And you want to mix in some, in some companies, like they're all about learning by doing, practice. So add the gamification into practice exercises rather than just points or badges for knowledge. So there's lots of different ways to do it. There, there's not one great way to do gamification. More practical tips and bonus point for having yet another prop at the ready to reference. Didn't even know it was coming. Again, the expert here, Carl Kopp, heading to round six, two moves away from an imaginary beach vacation. We're heading to another viewer question. I see one from Vincent here. Any tips on effective integration? Some examples, uh, parentheses bad there, uh, some bad examples of gamification tend to just draw out the length of time to finish a course without adding value. What are your thoughts? Oh, yeah. The, the, so... Uh, first of all, bad gamification is like any other bad design, right? I've been to bad lectures. You've been to bad discussions. We've been to bad bantering on talk show hosts. So lots of different places that you could go with that. But one of the things that you really need to, to, to consider is, um, does it meet? I always say the first thing you should think about is, what if we didn't gamify this? How would we teach it? and start there. And then if you say, well, we want the gamification because we want a, the context or we want the positive feedback loop or we want to give feedback right away on what they're doing, then add those elements in. But don't start with gamification for this subject. Now let's figure out like how it works. That's not the way to do it. You really should be strategic and not just with gamification, any of the instruction that you design. I, I find that gamification gets a bad rap because there's a lot of effort in it and there's a lot of things that you can pick apart, but you know what? Standard lecture based training, people just sit there quietly and take it, even though they don't like it, they're on their phone or whatever gamification. When you make them do something, then they become viscerally upset that, Hey, this training not only wastes my time, but now I've got to do something. So you've got to make it meaningful. You've got to look at what maybe doesn't how you would teach without gamification, and then work those in there, those affordances in there. As a meaningful answer right there, and I'm now very curious what it would be like if Carl appeared on Jimmy Fallon and what that banter would be like. Uh, that but would now, be, yeah. to head to round seven. You don't want to hear uh, me sing, though. Uh, oh, next, next, next no, appearance no, on I'm the not show. No, I'm not singing. Yeah. I have ideas. <laughs> so um, can you give us another interesting fact about your YouTube series and the history of learning games? So, yeah. So the very first uh, corporate learning game, corporate, was actually released in Russia in the 1930s in a typewriter factory. It by all a very back. by a woman who's she's named the she's named the 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 uh, grandmother of modern corporate gaming. So she's definitely somebody to check out. Awesome! It all comes back to the typewriter factories. We now all we have all of this. We now have all of this trivia that we can drop at dinner parties. So you're yeah. you're prepared. Carl's helping you out both in your everyday lives and in your professional lives today. As we head to round seven, one step away from perhaps the end of the most ridiculous live stream about gamification and history, you be the judge. Carl. Yeah, I, I, okay. <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, you Wait. didn't mean me. Sorry. Okay. That was rhetorical. Oh, you've judged Carl. You've You're judged. good at rhetorical. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but let's, let's see how you would respond to this objection though. How would you respond to the game has to be part of the learning experience for this whole thing to work? Yeah. So actually, uh, somebody asked a question. The, the research shows the best way to implement a game into learning is to talk about, you know, what you're going to 
covering the game and what kind of learning will come out of it, play the game and then debrief it. So you have to have that debriefing in order for the game to work. And it should be part of the integrated curriculum. You can't learn over here and, oh, here's a game over here. Go check or, oh, here's a game over here, wherever the game is. You really want to make sure that it is part of the learning curriculum. And it's not like added on in terms of, of the, the like bolted on. The, learning works best when it's in a flow like everything can be done in the flow of work everything can't be but a flow of learning needs to take place and one of the things that games do really well i mentioned this before is the sense of the the non-linear thinking and the what ifs games are really really good for what ifs like for what ifs for sale so so um lots of organizations have used games for lots of uh some of the most serious games there's actually a book in 1970 that was titled serious games so it's not this new thing that we like modern people just poofed out right it's been there for around in fact some people say that that uh uh, learning games and serious games started when humans first came on the earth when they had to teach other people things like um that were very serious so it's been around for a while and i don't even remember what that question was (laughs) <laughs> that's a great, you overcame the objection really early. And uh, that's good, right. Yeah. Gave us just kept going. Lesson. Talk them to death. If they're going to object to you, just keep going. Even get, you're getting influencing tips on the show <laughs> today as well. <laughs> We're going to go back towards viewer questions. I'm going to, I'm going to save you from this one question, Carl. Stephanie okay. asked, can Carl Cop sing a, a song about gamification? So just wanted to let you know that the fans are looking for the album. Right. Yeah. I, I, so. I'll, I'll, Maybe in the series, and it'll be and it'll be the sound of the um, Amazing Spider-Man story, like the cartoon. Spider-Man, so you're just gonna Spider-Man. Pick, yeah, remember? pick the lyrics out, just, just re-lyrics. Right, yeah. Oh, now Does whatever a game can, you know that kind of stuff. But huh? yeah, I'll help. Yeah, you yeah. Yes. We can make this work. I, platinum. Here I come. <laughs> Let's go to another question, though. What are the most common mistakes that designers make when designing games? Yeah, so I think there's a couple of mistakes they make. One is not including the learners in the game design because the learners are definitely, uh, uh, there's some some research that shows if you include the learners in the design of a learning game, they of course will like it much better and it'll be much more effective. So I think that's important. The other thing is um, don't assume that the games that you like to play, everybody likes to play. So you've got to really branch out. And someone had mentioned the landlord game, which was uh, the, a predecessor to Monopoly. And then the other the other thing that's really important is to match the affordances with the goal. So if the job is about making connections and thinking deeply, don't add time as a game element, right? Because that's not as important as making connections and thinking critically. So you've got to match the right game elements with the right um, learning objectives. And when those diverge, that's when it's a horrible, nightmarish gamification experience, which unfortunately more people have been involved with that than they've been involved with, you know, positive ones, just because you're not matching it up correctly. More great practical design advice that's going to take us into the final round where it's going to be a bit of a speed round so we can get the, you can see Carl's already celebrating on the game board, but not I, quite I yet. Not oh, quite okay. yet. Let's speed our way through a couple more viewer questions and get you out of here. First okay, question, are, are the tools commonly targeted to instructional design enough to implement gamification or should we be looking at other tools like game engines? So, uh, well, mm, it depends on what you want to accomplish. So we're conflating a little bit in this because we only have 25 minutes, games and gamification. So there's some tools that just do gamification, adding elements of games to that, and that can be really powerful and effective. Uh, But again, uh, Storyline, you could do a branching story game in Storyline, right? You could do um, things like that. So I, I really think the first place to start is with the design, and then whatever you decide you want to do, look at the tool. I teach a a uh, construct three uh, uh, class. So that's a really good tool for creating a, a very basic game, work with the student, we're doing something in Unity. So lots of lots of things. And that's really not speed round, is it? I need to be shorter. Okay. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Two more, two more quick. This person says, uh, for an educational game to be called educational when it is used as a tool to learn, meaning that normally you need a debriefing after playing and or learning reflection moment. What's your opinion on this? Yeah, I, I kind of, uh, yes, I agree with that. You need a debriefing. With, to me, there's no learning without reflection. There's only experience. If you right. learn, you've got to reflect. 
Love it. Love it. Last question. Question for Carl. Would you say that it is better to have an under resources gamification program, or I'd say under resourced or to not have one at all? Is it a do it perfectly or is it to, or not try it at all scenario? <laughs> Uh, I wish if I could do something perfectly, maybe I would do it, but I cannot. So uh, I really think that um, you need to to, to try it. Um, try it with a small group of people, pilot it. You will learn so much with a small pilot. Uh, don't don't go big at first. Uh, go small. Uh, perfect the smallness and then go forward. But don't look for perfection because you'll we'll, you'll yeah. <laughs> That's a, I can't, you can't think of a better that. place to wrap it up. Carl Kopp, you're a big winner on the Woo! first and potentially only installment of In the Know the Game. Is there anything else you'd like to say to the fans that were cheering you on? I, I just want to thank them for their dedication. I, I was down there a little bit. You know, the double-double uh, had me scared, but I was able, I think, to, to recover because of the enthusiasm of the fans. I just want to thank everyone for uh, your believing in me. Awesome. And where can Even when know- JD didn't. I, I believe, Carl. I Thank believe you, you have a beverage named after you in this industry, I, and it's really Carl only, Cappuccino. Yeah, my only professional goal at this point. <laughs> well done, Carl. You know, no matter how many times he plays the ITK game, Carl always comes out a winner. And despite how much abuse he gave me throughout the show, Carl is definitely such a great sport. And in fact, he sent us an updated message to share with you about some of his latest work. Go ahead, Carl. Hey, JD, how are you doing? I wanted to stop by and just give you a little bit of congratulations on your most viewed episode. It's really been exciting. I I had a great time on it, and I'm so glad that I um, won the the beach vacation. I'm here on this, you know, unreal beach. I'm having an unreal time. It's as if uh, I never left my office, but yet I'm surrounded by the ocean, the sand. So winning that prize was probably one of the top million things that's happened to me ever, right? I mean, this is just, so thanks a lot. And thanks for asking. Yeah, I am doing some really cool things. I just wanted to share a couple of those. So one is I created a course for LinkedIn Learning called Designing Scenario-Based Instruction. Uh, I think people who watched our episode would be interested in that because a lot of scenario-based stuff, of course, I enjoyed this course. A lot of the scenario-based stuff, though, is really related to creating games. So it's something that really is interesting. The other thing that I've been up to is the unauthorized, unofficial history of learning games is now exploring Candyland. So we're checking out to see whether or not Candyland is actually a learning game. And here I am eating some candy and trying to figure that out. So uh, that's something that folks would be interested in well. So I just wanted to once again, congratulate you on your uh, series. Now, the one thing that puzzles me, yes, you're wondering what puzzles me. The one thing that puzzles me is I'm surprised that your episode where you're dressed like Willy Wonka was not the number one episode. That was uh, a pure chocolate delight and anybody that likes Willy Wonka, you know, would be mildly amused by that particular episode. So anyway, once again, JD, it's been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the game. I'm so glad I won. The competition was tough, but, um, but I hung in there. So I just want to thank, you know, uh, the Academy and everyone for that, that boost that really got me over the edge uh, and allowed me to win that, win that contest. So anyway, congratulations. Have fun and uh, look forward to another interview. So take care, JD. Oh, if only we could all win a year long beach vacation, right? And did anyone else notice that Carl just congratulated himself for being the most popular ITK episode? Anyway, thanks so much to Carl Kopp for being our first ITK Rewind guest. If you enjoyed this classic episode, you should absolutely subscribe to ITK. Head over to exonify.com slash ITK for show announcements and reminders. You can also check out the entire ITK playlist on the Exonify YouTube channel or listen to In The Know on your favorite podcast app. Our next episode is only two weeks away and it's definitely not a rerun. In fact, it's so new, I won't even be here for it. 
Josh Felix has taken over the host chair to explore the current state of frontline work. And he'll be joined by Heather Gilmartin Adams and Danny Johnson from Red Thread Research, who will share brand new insights into their soon to be released research report, Getting Real About the Frontline Workforce. They'll highlight the connection between stability and high performance, the disconnect around employee development, the rise and fall of frontline recognition, and lots more critical information. And I'll also be checking in live from San Diego with an update from ATD23. So be sure to tune in on Wednesday, May 24th at 1130 a.m. Eastern Time to find out how you can overcome barriers to frontline success. Until then, I've been JD. Now you're in the know. And as a special tribute to today's ITK Rewind guest, I'd like to leave you with the lyrics to a brand new song about gamification written by ChatGPT. Here we go. Gamification and learning, a web of delight. Carl Caps, the expert, make it all right. Tasks become challenges and fun we will find. Learning through play, it's a state of mind. Gamification, gamification. Learning is fun with gamification. Using games to teach, a winning sensation. Gamification, gamification. Gamification and learning, just like Spider-Man. We'll catch knowledge just like he catches thieves in his hand. So let's spin a web any size and let gamification make learning a prize. I'll see you next time. In the Know is produced by Sam True. Visual design by Mark Anderson. Additional production support by Risha McCutcheon, Andrea Miller, Malia Bernard, and Megan Kay. The show is written and hosted by J.D. Dillon. ITK is an Exonify production. For more information about how Exonify helps frontline workers learn, connect, and get things done, visit exonify.com.